Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. How are you? And uh, I must say, it's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today is second day in April. Hello, Becky. How are you? How was your April Fool's Day? Um, I know yesterday was uh, the beginning of April. We're already in the fourth month. And hi, Mark. How are you? It's so good to have you here with me live. So whoever is live, please let me know. Thank you. I love the thumbs up. I love the emojis and hearts and everything. Oh, look. Oh, I love daisies. So this is all the things that I love. I'm surrounded with them. As a matter of fact, if I were to take you on a tour in my office, you will see I am surrounded with so much that it's it's been given to me um, by clients. It's been gifted to me by others and that I have accumulated. Um, I have this, uh, what do you call it? A library of books, a lot of books. Uh, I just love books. I mean, I've got books and galore, books and galore. Um, so do you read books? Do you still read books? Or are you doing everything online? Today's message is what, what is it that we are busy with? Is it the media? Is it news? What is the last thing that incorporate you incorporate in your mind before you go to sleep so every word every suggestion everything uh, impacts us especially words so remember they used to there was a saying called sticks and stones will not harm you but words will um, sticks and stones will not kill you but words do well words do not harm you but stinks and stones will ah even i had to come up with it but i think if we are um harmed by a stone the impact is physical sticks um maybe it will break our skin or something like that or we have something broken but words make such an impact words that we um are with every day a book a good book can truly make a difference in our life i know i used to read a book a week and i was a part of a book club for 11 years of course now i read a lot of text a lot of things that are like articles writing articles so i want to know what is it that you do how do words impact you Better yet, what is one word that you remember from childhood that even to this day you repeat it, either good or bad, it doesn't matter, but it's stuck, it's stuck with you. Um, like sayings, slangs, uh, things that your grandparents would say or your parents would repeat, and it, it just got embedded in your mind and we don't think about it like the difference between coming home or homecoming it's the same word but when we flip it it's two different things homecoming it just reminds us of high school um, going to a prom there is a king there is a queen they are uh, they are the favorites. They are selected by their peers. They are voted upon. But coming home can have a good feeling or not such a good feeling. And coming home to what? Coming home to a, a happy home, a dysfunctional home. So when I do hypnotherapy, by the way, yes. In case you don't know me, I'm Lisa Bubari, your master clinical hypnotherapist. When I do therapy work and we delve deep within, 
I like to take my clients to a time and a place when they are safe, when they feel good. And there is nothing better to help my clients feel good internally, going home within. So in order for us to heal, I help my clients, I help you, I help everyone to tap within themselves so they feel home, they feel safe, they feel secure and confident. First, right here. Once we feel good about ourselves, then we can go home to anything and cope with the challenges, cope with whatever it is, or go home feeling absolutely wonderful and bring more joy to home. So I don't know if there is a perfect home because reality is that we all have homes that we have parents, they have their own perceptions, the way they brought us up, and we have either partners, lovers, children, husband, wife, and that is called a relationship. That means relating to finding that ship that crosses one another, finding how we can relate to one another. And relationships are absolutely amazing. But what if our relationship with ourselves is not as strong or we don't know all about ourselves? So here's something. When I ask my clients, what is your best attribute? What is your best physical feature? Go ahead, right here. Please share. Share what is your best physical feature. Share what do you believe to be your best attribute, your strongest attribute. It's, it takes a moment for us to think, oh my God, what do I like about myself? Uh, what parts of my behavior I think are the best? And not necessarily that there is something wrong, but if I were to ask, what is it that you believe you are vulnerable in or weak at? It's not to remind us about weakness, but to see that we all have it. And how can we strengthen our weaknesses instead of uh, beating upon it? Here's the difference. <laughs> um, Here's another word, fool. Yesterday was April Fool's Days, April Fool's Days. Um, did you fool anyone? Did you get fooled? And when we think about April Fool's, there's people who uh, fool us with a word, uh, pranks, and sometimes April Fool's Day can turn into something that is um, more traumatic, even though the person who did it, they thought it was funny. Of course, we know most jokes are supposed to be funny, but it all depends on who's receiving it. So let me give you an example. I remembered yesterday uh, being a child and long, long time ago, probably I was about six, seven years old, not understanding the impact of words. I was a little kid and my parents were not home. They had gone out for dinner and I was staying with my grandmother. My grandmother uh, picked up the phone and she heard a very devastating news that their godfather had just passed. And when she turned around, she started crying and she told me, Uncle uh, died. Um, and it's a child, so maybe she didn't really understand what it was because I asked grandma what was wrong, why she was crying. I don't know the words, but I remember vividly, we were on the second floor and I don't know how much longer, my parents came home and I ran, opened the door right over, like they were coming up the stairs and I just blurted out, 
mom, Uncle died. Um, of course, it was an April Fool's and grandma was fooling me, but I didn't know that was it. So me repeating it as a child, not knowing the impact of the word and how either parents do this to a child or a child does to a parent, or we do it to each other. My mom was devastated. She was shocked coming up the stairs. My father was there. He held on and grandma went, I got the spanking because I said that. And then grandma made sure that she said that it was an April's fool. It was a joke that her cry was a joke. Now, that is what I'm saying. Sometimes when we think we are playing a prank, it's not. Have you been played? And here's another way of fool. When we believe someone and they keep promising you something, and each time they have an excuse of not delivering it. And you believe them. You come to make a fool out of yourself. And that's another saying. Uh, of once I believe you, the second time I trust, the third time I'm the fool, right? So the joke is on me. I may not be saying the sayings correctly. But how many times do we fool ourselves thinking that someone is going to change? Or we promise ourselves we're going to make a change. And we keep doing the same thing over and over. Just yesterday, I had a client who came in and mom brought her a teen. Uh, last years of teen, and there is this habit that needs to change. And the entire family is worried about her habit. And I said it. If you really decide to work with me, I want to know what is your goal. Why do you want to make this change now? You're the one who decided to come here and she had worked with me long before, only one, one session or two sessions. And now three years later, she wants to come versus the parents wanting to have her come. Because she tried many therapists and decided this is where she wants to do the work. But again, before I say yes, I want to know when we want to make a change, why? And it's not so much why did I do it, but why do I want to make that change? The influence that we have over ourselves, over our inner child, becoming a better adult, is to know the impact that we also have within ourselves. So in order for us to heal, to transform we need to have something we are going forward, something greater, a better reward, a healthier self. When we have that goal, that vision, just like a business, there's going to be a business plan. There is going to be a goal we look forward to. And hers was, I want to be more social and I want to start dating. I no longer want to be alone. That in itself is one of the greatest, greatest influences, internal influence that I can help her overcome a negative habit, a behavior, and help her through by evoking it, embracing herself right now, and then evolving to what it is that she wants which is my 3E technique. So if we do something, excuse me, we want to make sure that 
we live with a happy heart. We look forward to a better life, a healthier self. And when we have done something that no longer works and it helped us, safeguards us in the past, and it's now become a hindrance, it's time for us to let it go and move. So today, we can do a small little technique to unblock what was. Embrace today and you can transform. So here's one of the techniques. I want you to sit back completely. Sit back, make sure your back is resting. Hello, Claudia. Hi, Roxy. And uh, thanks for being here. I want to know if right before I do the technique of this relaxation, um, there's one way you can empower yourself right here, right now, and is to say, I am willing to let go of past patterns and create a loving uh, pattern, a new loving pattern for myself. I willingly let go of past patterns in order to make a better pattern today. So we become in control of what was and today you choose something better. Words impact us and become lo more loving. Become more loving towards yourself. Become more loving to your inner child. Become more loving to your partner, your lover, your children. Here's one way when we talk about um, impact of words. If a child, just like that fool's uh, joke uh, prank that I, it was, and I took it literally and I blurred it out to my mom, realizing years later how things impact us. If a child, let's say, gets hurt, here's two scenarios. The one child is hurt and the mother runs and the first thing is like, oh my God, what happened? Oh, you hurt yourself. Oh, you're bleeding, right? And then you hug the child and you say, it's okay, we're gonna take you to a hospital and uh, everything is gonna be fine. Uh, they're going to put stitches in there and, oh my God, she's bleeding. Oh my God, he's bleeding, whatever it is. Uh, and my hair is so unruly today, right? That's one way. But what if that same thing happens and we come to the child and we go, oh, yes. Oh my God, you hurt yourself. Let me give you a hug. We hug and we say, it's okay. It seems you have a bad cut and you may need stitches. I'm going to take you to the hospital and the doctor is going to take care of you. Now, let's put some impact uh, packing and ice on your head, on your cut, until we get to the hospital. Now the child feels safe. Mom is doing something about it instead of mom going out of control. So the first response of that child is, I am safe versus, oh, what is happening? They get to the hospital and while going, driving to the hospital, mom holds the child and says, we're almost there. You're going to be just fine. And remember, let me tell you something about me being cut when I was a child. And while the child is hurting or crying, suddenly they shift attention from their hurt and pain and go and start listening to a story about what mom, what happened to mom. And look, mom has recovered. Mom is doing fine. Getting to the hospital. The child is there. The doctor tends to it or the nurse. And the mother's words are, look, the stitches are working fine. You're going to heal fine because my little boy or girl heals so good. 
What we do, we impact that child by remembering that their body heals, they are safe, help is on their way, and by the way, look at me, I used to be hurt, now I'm just fine. And one day, you'll remember this, and you'll be fine. I know it's sometimes harder to do it when it's your child, but isn't it great to practice becoming more aware of loving, impactful, safety words? And knowing how to be more in control of yourself and of others. So the technique of the relaxation, let's sit back. And as you breathe in and out, become aware of your breath. One more time, nice deep breath. And exhale. And just remember, as you are becoming more aware of your body, allow every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue in your body to become more relaxed. As a matter of fact, becoming aware of every essence of you from the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet. And as you are listening to me, with your eyes open or closed, just become aware of all the silent words that are running and thoughts in your head. Let them come and go as if each one comes and goes like clouds up in the sky. And you know how as children we are mesmerized by clouds. So each and every breath that you breathe, allow it to come and just swipe and sweep away all thoughts, ideas, concepts, images, good, bad, right, wrong, positive, negative, words, thoughts, until you become aware of nothing and yet everything that surrounds you and is within you. Becoming aware of all your senses, even swallowing your saliva, your tongue, the roof of your mouth, your teeth, your nose, your chin, your cheekbones, your eyes, your eyelashes, your eyebrows, even your ears and earlobes the back of your neck, the back of your head, and all the way up above your head and every single hair strand, your scalp, all the pores, your brain, your mind, And in your own mind's eye, you know what it looks like. How intelligent and how sharp, smart, unique, intricate your mind is. Powerful. In total control. That can hold memories all the way to your birth until this very moment. That remembers everything about you 
as if this is your story. It's like going home, feeling home, feeling safe within your mind, your images, your body, yourself. Because you matter. Because you are loving. Because you are lovable. Because you are loved. And you know how to love. From this day forward, every day, in every way, appreciating, accepting yourself far more deeply than ever before. Being grateful to you, to all of you as you are right here, right now. And as you wish and choose and decide to make a change and be the change for a healthier you, remember, healing begins. And transformation happens when you say, I am ready, I matter. With that, be grateful to all of you, your loved ones, where you come from, who you are, and see beyond your seeing eyes what you want to create in your life. Releasing all the past patterns, bringing joy, vitality, love, and grace. This is Lisa Bubari. Whenever you are ready, you can open your eyes, feeling absolutely rested, wonderful, relaxed, content, and know. You are absolutely amazing. And become more loving to you. With this, I thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is, this is Lisa Bubari. It's April 2nd. And remember, at all times, evoke what was, embrace what is, and evolve to what will be, because you matter. You may find more information on healwithin.com or on my YouTube, Lisa Bubari YouTube, and you can subscribe right here. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, God bless. And may the universal light be with you.